Sunday coming up, April 2nd, down in Orlando, Florida. Again, they keep going back to Florida. Maybe one day they'll branch out, hopefully. Yet again, I am missing WrestleMania. I would love to be there, but maybe next year, hopefully. I've been saying that since like WrestleMania 30, but we're going to make it happen. I promise. And maybe I'll be able to record a lot of it. But let's talk about our predictions and our preview and what we think is going to happen at the Showcase of Immortals. Let's start off with the Battle Royal. The Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Let's see, Cesaro has won it, Big Show has won it, and Baron Corbin won it last year, which is quite the surprise. But this year, it doesn't really feel like it's a surprise. It's either going to be Braun Strowman or Sami Zayn, I believe. I don't believe there's anybody else who's potentially built up who could win this. Could they surprise us? Sure. Is this a hard match to predict because there's so many people in it? Yes, but if I'm putting my money on anybody, it's Braun Strowman or Sami Zayn. All right, now let's talk about the women. And we're going to start with the SmackDown women. Now, the SmackDown women's division is incredible. It's on fire. Everybody feels like a star, and nobody really feels like they're higher up than anybody else, which is awesome, and Raw should really take some notes from that. Now, in this match, we have all the women, which might be a bit overkill, but at this point, I'm okay with it. It works for what they're doing. Now, who's going to win? It's a tough one, because we have Naomi returning from injury in her hometown at WrestleMania, and a title that she had to give up because they thought her injury was going to be longer than it actually was. So Naomi would be the easy choice to pick, but part of me wants to say it's Becky Lynch's year again. I think she had a nice title run at the beginning. She was the inaugural SmackDown Women's Champion. But her run wasn't as great as it could have been because everyone else wasn't on that level yet. Now, a few months removed, everybody is up there. So I think Becky could win it again, and then we could have some great matches with her and Naomi, her and Alexa, her and Natalia, her and Carmella, and the whole division. It's, it's wide open. All right, now let's get over to the Raw women. Phenomenal talent with Charlotte, Bailey, Sasha, and Nia Jax. All four women are phenomenal. I kind of feel like Nia Jax was just thrown into this match. It might have worked better as a three-way, but I think they were afraid to do another triple threat because of last year's WrestleMania. But who's going to win? I don't see Charlotte winning back-to-back -back WrestleManias. She just won last year. She had her big moment. She had the 16-0 streak for pay-per-view wins. But now I think it's somebody else's turn to shine. I think Bailey's going to retain because it just makes sense. I mean, the Sasha heel turn is either going to happen after the match or the Raw after Mania. But I don't think Sasha's going to win, even though she would be my second pick. If I was going on order, it would be Bailey, Sasha, Charlotte, and then Nia. I think Nia might be the one who takes the final pinfall. I'm not sure. But that's who I'm picking, Bailey. All right, now let's talk about the Intercontinental Championship match between Dean Ambrose and Baron Corbin. Now, they're advertising this match as just a regular match, which is weird to me because I kind of expected this to be a street fight or some kind of no-holds-barred match because of the two participants in it. But if I'm picking anybody to win this one, it's got to be Dean Ambrose. I think he needs the win more. Baron Corbin's not quite ready yet. Maybe the next month or next two or three months after he develops his character a little more, I think he'll be ready to take that title from Ambrose. But I think Ambrose really needs the win this year. What about the Cruiserweights? 205 Live has been on fire since it came on the scene. The Cruiserweight Classic was absolutely amazing. 205 Live has been good, but the Cruiserweight matches overall themselves, not so much. Inject Neville into the Cruiserweight division. Boom! It's on fire. Neville as the Cruiserweight Champion was a spectacular choice, and I don't want to see him lose it just yet. But Austin Aries, on the other hand, 
he's like the WWE's Conor McGregor. I think he has that appeal. He's got that charisma. He's got that just crossover appeal, I feel like. So I honestly think Austin Aries is going to dethrone the self-proclaimed King of the Cruiserweights. Raw Tag Team Titles now. We've got Cesaro and Sheamus, The Club with Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, and Enzo and Cass. Triple Threat Ladder Match for the Raw Tag Team Championship. I don't think Cesaro and Sheamus are going to win. I'm sorry. I love Cesaro. I hope him and Sheamus kind of break away soon. But I kind of feel like they're in this match just to have something to do. I want the club to retain the tag team titles because I feel like they deserve it more and this would be a bigger thing for them. Enzo and Cass, though, I feel like WWE is going to give the titles to them. They have been phenomenal in getting the crowd behind them and... I do like them, even though I still feel like Big Cass needs to be a singles competitor with Enzo as his manager. Chris Jericho, Kevin Owens, United States Championship match. This has been building for months and months and months with the friendship and the constant who, when is he going to turn, win, 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 and then it finally happened. Kevin Owens finally said, you know what, Chris Jericho, I've been using this whole time. And now I'm done with you. And now they're going to have this amazing match at Mania. I think this is going to be a potential show stealer. But the obvious winner has got to be Kevin Owens. Because Chris Jericho is probably leaving soon to go back and tour with Fozzie. Because I know they have a new record coming out soon. So, Kevin Owens I think gets the win. I think it's going to be a fantastic match. Most likely a show stealer. And new United States Champion, Kevin Owens. Alright. Now let's talk about the match that nobody wants to see but we're getting anyway, and none of us are probably going to like the result. The Undertaker versus Roman Reigns. I didn't want to see this match. It doesn't make sense to me. I mean, they want Roman Reigns to be the guy. I like Roman Reigns. Look, I understand everybody hates Roman Reigns. He can't wrestle. He's not charisma, all this stuff. I don't hate the guy. I just hate the position that he's in. You know, he really should be a heel. I know we're beating a dead horse with this one, but come on. He is a natural at just being a heel. But if he beats The Undertaker at WrestleMania in what could potentially be his last match, even though I feel like the WWE would promote The Undertaker's last match, I, I just think it would set the world on fire almost. I mean, Roman Reigns would have to have a heel turn. The only way I'm okay with him beating The Undertaker is if it's via a heel turn. So my pick is going to be The Undertaker to win, but I expect Roman to turn heel after the match. Fingers crossed, ladies and gentlemen. All right, guys. It's time to have this talk. Goldberg, Brock Lesnar, Universal Championship. Why? I feel like me talking about this match is going to be longer than the actual match. So let's keep this short and sweet. Brock Lesnar, winner, new Universal Champion. That's all I'm saying about it. WWE Championship match. Bray Wyatt, Randy Orton. This story has been building up for a very long time, and everybody thinks that Randy Orton is going to win. I don't. Bray Wyatt deserves this win. Bray Wyatt has been a fantastic WWE Champion, and he has to at least get one major victory before they decide to take it away. Bray Wyatt is going to retain the WWE Championship. John Cena. The Miz. For years, these two have kind of been crossing paths, and they did have a Mania match back at WrestleMania 27, which was okay. The Miz wasn't as hot as he is right now. Miz has had a phenomenal year. No pun intended. So, John Cena and Nikki Bella versus The Miz and Maurice could be a pretty good match. It's got the story. It's just a matter of whether the story they tell in the ring will live up to the story they've told outside of the ring. There's a lot of rumors circulating that Nikki Bella is going to retire after this match, so it makes me want to say that her and Cena are going to win. But, Cena's not going to be around for a while after WrestleMania, and if Nikki's leaving, why would they win the match? The Miz needs this win. Maurice, she's just kind of there to take care of Nikki and kind of make it an even battle. 
This match is about The Miz. And I believe in him, and I believe The Miz will defeat John Cena. AJ Styles versus Shane McMahon. Does anybody really want to see this match? Really? AJ Styles has had a fantastic year. But Shane McMahon is his reward? Is that a marquee matchup? Am I missing something here? I don't know. I don't want to see this match. I'm sure it'll be okay. I'm sure we'll talk about it and we'll tweet about it. But there's so many other things they could have done with AJ. And I just... How many years does he have left, honestly? So, I'm picking AJ Styles to win this match. There might be some outside interference, maybe. But I'm picking AJ Styles to beat Shane McMahon. Alright, now this is a match I've been looking forward to to a very long time. Seth Rollins versus Triple H. The self-proclaimed King Slayer versus the King of Kings himself. Now, I know this is a non-sanctioned match, but this isn't the first time they've done this. Probably won't be the last. But I think... No. I know this match is going to be great. I know there's been reports, and Seth Rollins said he's been kind of dealing with an illness, but come WrestleMania morning, he is going to be ready. He missed last year. He's not going to miss again. He was determined to make it to this year's WrestleMania. And this storyline with Triple H writes itself. I mean, come on now. Triple H was there to crown Seth Rollins as the very first NXT champion. Seth Rollins turned on the shield to join Triple H, become the WWE champion. And now, here we are. They're on two different sides. Triple H is ready to move on. Seth is defending his honor, and he wants retribution for everything that has happened. This story has had such an amazing build. Just Triple H hasn't even been on TV, and this story has been building and building. Here's what I think is going to happen in this match. Triple H, Seth Rollins, they're going to have a match. The length of that match really depends on how healthy Seth Rollins is. If he's 80, 90%, I see them getting a good, solid 10-minute match in before Samoa Joe comes out and attacks Seth Rollins. It's a non-sanctioned match, so what are they going to do? Disqualify Triple H? Come on. Samoa Joe is going to come out when Triple H looks like he's getting beat. And then I believe, and I hope, and we all deserve this, Finn Balor is going to make his return and save Seth Rollins. Setting up the feud moving forward, and then Triple H can go away from TV for a while. My pick to win this match overall, Seth Rollins. I hope you guys enjoyed this WrestleMania video. I love doing these little predictions and previews. I doubt I'll do them every month because there's just way too many pay-per-views on the WWE Network. But I'm considering doing them all for the Big Four, which if you don't know, are WrestleMania, SummerSlam, Survivor Series, and the Royal Rumble. If you'd like to see that, please leave a comment down below. Also, if you enjoyed my predictions, please like and share this video. And I hope you all will subscribe and enjoy the rest of my journey.